Hey guys, we're sitting out here, October 9th. Uh, we're gonna be getting our evening hunt here started, but I wanted to do a quick little video over failed food plots. Um, we actually came in here about 2.30 and um, went up on top of the ridge, did a water tank that I'll address here in, in a few minutes, but I wanna talk, specifically talk about the failed food plots here first and what I end up doing. So I, I'm usually proactive, you know, most of the time I'm gonna have one or two food plots that you know just aren't really gonna make. Um, so I always buy uh, three to 400 pounds of winter rye or winter wheat uh, just to have extra or a layering. Um, but this particular food plot here I'm hunting over, uh, the deer have been coming in here hammering it and the food plot's just not keeping up. I mean, the, there's just not a, not enough rain. There hadn't been enough rain like usual to even have the, you know, the amount of growth that I'm used to. So, you know, here we are again. Um, come back in here with winter rye and you know the deer will eat it um you know I've, I've done this several years in the past on fill food plots worked out really well um but we got some rain in the forecast here so kind of go through the steps what i did is i ran the drag twice around um really kind of you know make that seed to soil contact uh, get that loose loose dirt um, going for me then i came through here broadcasted the seed or the winter rye uh, winter wheat will work the same just whatever you got available there. And then I ran the disc, or not the disc, but sorry, the drag one more time around here. And um, we should be good to go. We got rain here, I think coming, uh, hopefully Tuesday and Wednesday. I'm gonna keep my fingers crossed, cause man, we need some rain, you know, or, uh, not only for the deer, but just pretty much for all animals. Uh, and you know, the soil's really hurting. Um, but, but the other thing um, I did get going is I ended up establishing uh, another, uh, tree for a mock scrape end up scraping up the ground a couple spots here about 30 yards away been having quite a few deer left and right here coming through the food plot but i really want to slow down that movement that way i can isolate that uh, that buck if he comes through here or a buck that comes through here the only i want to harvest um and then kind of what i was uh, addressing there at first is water tank um so i was running the 40 gallon water tank up on on this particular ridge top here um, and the deer and the raccoons and the bobcats i mean they're just all just in there which is phenomenal um but i was starting to run out of the water you know and very quickly well i want to make sure that i get still those you know those um tacticam xb video uh, cellular footage so i can share with you guys as well as keep it you know for myself but um <clears throat> i need to get a bigger tank well, you know, I know a lot of guys run the 100, 150 gallon tanks. Well, that's just really not uh, something I'm really interested in at this point in time. And the reason being is I don't believe a bobcat or those raccoons are going to get, you know, be able to get that footage. And specifically the bobcats. I absolutely love watching those bobcats come in there and drink. Um, even though this fall I'm probably going to trap it, you know, try trapping them. But I do enjoy watching them, you know, for the time being. And... Um, you know, it really it keeps it keeps it uh, the water real fresh, where I can run up and run up that ridge. You know, every month or so uh, during the year, kind of check out everything. If I need to bring the brush hog in there, brush hog, and you know, then fill the tank up and move on down the road. But as I feel, as I was thinking about coming in here and doing this, um, you know, I really had to get a good strategy here. So um, I typically know where the majority of the the, my deer or my bucks are bedded here that I'm hunting so what I ended up doing is I drove all the way to the far end of the piece of property went up the far end come back around and then came in so basically what I've done is I ended up coming up through there taking any deer that was basically bedding up here that was going to get up and forcing them if they were you know pushing them back on this piece of property so basically, it's just kind of protecting your deer herd there. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm, uh, not one to, you know, look down on anybody that, you know, harvests a, a one of the big deer I'm hunting. But uh, I don't really want to be the reason why, you know, they get to harvest that deer either. So just kind of keep that in mind when you are, if you are having to go up on top of a ridge, you know, filling up water tank, or whatever you guys are, you know, doing, doing that day, you know, keep in mind. But, you know, I definitely want to just do a quick, quick little video here on the fell food plots because it's still not too late you know you can get out there go get your some rye from your ag store and you know enjoy that 
um, it was pretty hot today, uh, but I got to enjoy a little Pepsi action um, after my work effort. So we're going to go ahead and get quiet here. Appreciate you guys liking the, or liking the video. Like always, hopefully you guys are getting out there late nature. Best luck on your upcoming hunt.